So I received a lot of questions about Capital Power recently. Is it going to be the next Algonquin? Are they going to cut their dividend? What is going on as the stock price keeps going down and the yield keeps going up? Is it a red flag? What happened with the payout ratio? We're gonna answer all those questions. But first, let's start at what happened to Algonquin not too long ago. So for Algonquin, for a good 10 years, aggressive growth by acquisition, they were growing their business like there's no tomorrow, focus on renewable assets, increasing their dividend year after year, even in 22, increased around June by 6%. So everything was peachy, everything was nice. And then in November of 22, the same year, they report a bad quarter, they revised their guidance, and now their interest rates are hitting big time because they have about a quarter of their debt on floating rate. And you know what happened over the past two years, interest rate keeps going up, so they were into trouble. However, management says, you know what? We are confident. And then the CEO buys for like one or $2 million worth of share right after the announcement. So everybody thought, well, it's all good, right? Nothing to worry about. Maybe it's just going to be a bad quarter, but then they're gonna catch it up. In January of 23, they do an investor update. They announce that they're gonna sell renewable assets and they're gonna slash the dividend. That was pretty much the end for most investors. And since then, there was not much happening around Algonquin. Actually, they're still struggling. They do not post much growth and they haven't increased their dividend since then. So a lot of investors are afraid to get ca caught up by another Algon coin by investing in capital power. I know the feeling because I used to own AQN and I sold right after the dividend cut announcement. Never looked back after that, but obviously I lost about 50% of that investment. The important part when you're making a mistake, because that was not my first mistake and it's not my last one as well, was to look at what happened and understand why I made a mistake. In my case, the thing is, I led the narrative, so the growth by acquisition, the dividend growth, the renewable assets, take too much place and not looking at the metrics enough. So when the numbers do not match the investment thesis, the narrative, when you have a disruption, it is a big red flag. I should have followed the funds of operation closer because then I would have seen that management was imprudent to increase their dividend in 2022 and then it was just pure bad management altogether. So one thing that raises a lot of concern about capital power, it's its payout ratio. When you look at this graph, you see that not too long ago, it was over 200% for the classic payout ratio. You say, oh, we're going to look at the cash, the cash payout ratio, focusing on free cash flow. Well, not getting any better, still over 100%. So now you look at a business that is not doing well in the stock market, the yield is increasing, and the payout ratio is out of whack. And as you look at the price on the graph and you look at the yield, you're starting to remember what happened with Algonquin. Okay, grow by acquisition, higher yield, they still increase their dividend, but there's something wrong with this business and the payout ratio are not working out. So again, it's not the time to make the same mistake I did with the strong narrative, but weak numbers. We have to look a little bit deeper inside of the financial statements. So the first reflex is a good one. The payout ratio is too high, the yield is getting higher up, there is, a, there is a problem you need to investigate. But the first thing that you must understand is the metric itself, right? So what's the payout ratio? What's a cash payout ratio? Are they the right ratios to use? At Dividend Stocks Rock, we have fundamental newsletters. Those are educational newsletters helping you to understand financial metrics, strategies, buying and selling process, how to build your portfolio. One of them is how to read a payout ratio and understanding how it is being calculated. Because I know it sounds very easy, but it's more complicated than that. I will let you download the payout ratio newsletter if you subscribe to my newsletter right there in the link description below. You enter your email, you're gonna receive an access to a secret page where you're going to get some free resources and one of them will be the payout ratio. So once you have understood how it's calculated and the different metrics, now it's time to go on the company's website and do some digging. 
So what you see here is the Q3 2003, so the latest earnings that we have access to. And I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. So you see the three months for 23 and 22, and then you see the nine months from 23 and 22 as well. If you look at the payout ratio, you see for Q3 2023, so regardless if you use the payout ratio or the payout ratio based on the adjusted funds from operation, you're at 27 or 24% everything's fine right if you look at the nine months well you're at 33 and 32 so once again very stable not to worry about everything is great then when you look at q3 2022 the payout ratio goes to 290 percent and this what happened is we had a lot of accounting differences, a lot of amortization impairments and value that are not realized at fair market. Those adjustments made the earnings per share going down big time and seems now that the payout is at risk. But when you look at the adjusted funds from operation, again, you still have a payout ratio that is very low. So using the adjusted funds from operation, AFFO payout ratio is not ideal, but this is the best metric that you can use for a company like Capital Power. The problem with utilities that are capital intensive is they have a lot of non-cash event in their books that will affect earnings, but that should not affect the cash flow. The reason why we don't use the free cash flow is obviously since those companies are capital intensive, that means that they will require financing. So then you need to consider that if the free cash flow is lower, it's probably because they have strong capex, capital expenditure, and as they invest a lot of money in their projects, while well, they will also require some financing, but the cash payout ratio do not consider the financing because then they were gonna tell you, well, they're financing their dividend, which is not the case. They're financing their project and the cash flow is sufficient to pay the dividend. So by considering the right metric, you realize that capital power is a healthy dividend and that's not a problem here. So now what's gonna happen going forward? Because it's one thing to look at the past, but it's another to look at the future. Fortunately, on the same company's website, you will see the 2024 guidance. As you can see, they don't expect a big year. It's going to pretty much be relatively the same as the last year. So it's not necessarily good news, but it's not necessarily bad news either. But one thing I really appreciated in that presentation is actually this graph. So when you're looking at a capital intensive business model, you wanna know how capital will be allocated. Here you have the expected source of cash flow and how they will use it. So as you can see, only $320 million will go to pay dividend while the AFFO is at 820. So we're still going to have a pretty solid payout ratio for 24, as long as they are within the same guideline. So to go back with the narrative versus the number, the numbers, now we see that CPX as an interesting narrative where they're growing by acquisition, they're going to have more natural gas utilities um, at the end of 24 for as they complete their integration with the latest uh, acquisition that they have announced at the end of 23. They continue to focus on renewable assets. They are well established as a utility business and the numbers are backing up that thesis. So you should not have to worry too much this year as everything is in order and the, the payout ratio according to the FFO that are expected will still be in line and there's still plenty of room for another increase. What is going on though is CPX obviously suffer the weight of higher interest rate and also the inflation. So as the economy is expected to slow down, demand for energy should not grow that much. So it's not going to be a peachy year for 20 uh, in 24 for CPX, but you don't have to worry too much about the dividend at this point. Actually, you can expect even another dividend increase for 2024. Again, Click on the link below to register to my newsletter and get the DSR payout ratio fundamental newsletter. You're going to understand the difference between the payout ratio, the cash payout ratio, and the FFO payout ratio. All right, guys, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to not miss my next video next Thursday. And until then, don't forget to stay invested.